Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and we are in amazing project as we are making a remote control car and it's taking a lot of perseverance to get there. I'm super proud of you guys. There's so much wiring and lots of little things we have to pay attention to. This is built out of our Elegoo kit. If you want the code that we have been writing, you can always check us out at patreon.com slash Rosie Research and make sure to check out our other projects on YouTube. So, so far we've gotten our lights wired up. That was our first few lessons. We did a siren, which didn't work with our IR. And we've got these motors wired up. We got them to go. And now we've also got them to work on command with our remote control, which is pretty great. All right, there's a little bit of a delay. So you just gotta be careful and thoughtful about that. We've also, in a previous lesson, looked at all of the code numbers for the, sort of this top keypad right here. And that allows us to use any of these for whatever sort of things we might want to do. So, so far we have forward and stop. One thing we might want would be backwards. So let's make that case over in our Arduino code. I'm going to copy my case for um, forwards. And I'm gonna paste that in. I'm gonna change the case number because I want backwards to be my volume minus, which is 43095. So it's gonna be case 43095. And here, I'm going to switch my highs and lows. So when five and seven are high, that's one and one pin that goes here high, one pin that goes there high, these guys sort of go forward. So when those are low and six and eight are high, this should go backwards. So I wanna switch who's high and who's low right here. And then I'm also, instead of serial printing forward, I'm gonna wanna serial print backward. Oops, doesn't need to be in all caps. Just like that. And now I can upload this sketch to my Arduino. And let's see, once it is done uploading, there we go. We can go forward, we can stop, and we can go backwards. And we can even go from backwards, probably to forwards, although it seems like it'd be good to stop in between. Oop, my stop, all of a sudden stop, there we go, stopped working. So we can make it work just like that, which is kind of exciting. It does, we just gotta get in the right spot too for it to read those items. Great, so now we have them going forwards and backwards along with a stop. Now we might want to turn, and there's a couple different ways you can turn. You can turn where just one wheel is sort of rolling and you turn around a pivot point, or you could turn where one's going forward and one's going backwards where you turn on a dime. So I call this sort of like a tank turn if it's sort of spinning on the dime, and that's one forward, one backwards or you can also have sort of a normal car turn like that. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use these for normal car turns and these two for the tank turns. So in our code over in Arduino, we need to add some more cases. So you can copy your previous case, make sure you include that break, it's really important. And let's make a new case, and that is gonna be going, let's say, to the left. So that's code 8925 on mine. You are going to want to make sure that you do that activity on your own to make sure, um, oops, 8925, to make sure that you have the same codes because all of these can send out slightly different codes. All right, so for case 8925 on mine is this guy. We're going to put turn left. And to turn left, I really want one motor to not really do anything. It'll just kind of hang out. And the other motor will go forward. So let's check if that's five as high and everything else would be low in that situation. So let's see if that turns left. It might turn right, and in which case we would make this our, we would switch, we would flip flop our five and our seven. So let's upload that to the board. And it's done compiling. It's taking a moment to get on that board. All right, so now let's press this button. That one is this guy. It's actually looking like it's going in reverse. Did we get our forwards and reverses mixed up? That's okay. So this guy, and we can stop that just like that. Oh, this is so exciting that it's all working for us. I'm thinking, I'm wondering if we've got our forwards. Our forwards are going backwards, and our backwards are going forwards. So let's swap that code first. All right, so 
in our code, if you're finding the same thing, we're gonna turn pin five and seven low and six and eight high. And that means we need to switch our backward as well. And that will make my car drive off somewhat sort of to the left. Now this would be then, let's see, I think we want six high and five low then. So let's read up those to the board. And this is just a lot of troubleshooting. Yours might be slightly different because if your motors are hooked up in a reversed polarity than mine, um, or if so like sort of your pins, if you put them in slightly different spots, it will change, but what you can do is just a lot of troubleshooting on pressing the button and does it go forward or does it turn right or does it turn left like I think. And now here, I can imagine this wheel is going forward, my car would sort of come in and turn to the left. So that is exactly what I want for my left hand turn. And we can make a right hand turn in a very similar way. So let's add a new case, we'll copy all of this. And we will make a new case. And for my right hand turn, that's this button. That's code 49725. So let's change our case number to 49725. Again, double check what your case number is gonna be, because it's gonna be a little different than mine. All right here, we're gonna turn right. So I want six to be low, and I want eight to be high. And we can upload this code. I always like to upload and check each time with each new piece. And that really helps to figure out what's going on in your circuit. All right, it's done uploading. We go right, just this one is going forward. It's exactly what we want. So right now we have forward, we can pause, we have backwards, just like that. Fabulous. We can pause. Doesn't seem to always read it exactly the first time, but it is a homebrew project. Let's see, there we go and we have that one. So you can also just go switch straight from one to the other if you would like to without hitting stop. So the other thing I wanna do is these tank turns, which I'm gonna use these two arrows for, and that's when one is going forward and the other is going backwards. So for this tank turn, 57375 is my gonna be my code. So let's add a new case. That is gonna be 57375. And this is gonna be a tank. And I think I want this tank to sort of go this way. So that's gonna be a tank left. All right, and now to go left, I had six high. So I definitely want six high here. Oops, it needs to be all caps in there. And I don't want eight to be high because that would make this guy go forward. I actually want five to be, or seven to be high, seven and eight are the ones that are together. And so that should turn this one into reverse. So I should have one going forward and one going in reverse. And so let's upload this new code. And when it's done uploading, we can check and see. There we go, so I've got one in reverse right here. This one's sort of going backwards and that one is going forwards. Fantastic, so my tank right is gonna be the other set. So let's copy this. We'll give ourselves the break. And my tank right is gonna be 36975. So we'll change that case to 36975. We'll change what we write to tank right. And now we wanna change our highs to lows because we wanna switch everything. So five will be high, seven will be low, six will be low, and eight will be high. And that should be the last thing that we're gonna to try to upload and we should have all of the directions that we want, which will be great. All right, so let's try this tank. And in fact, this one's going forward and that one's going in reverse. So this is gonna tank just like that. It's gonna turn sort of on a dime and swivel. Fantastic. So this is our little remote control project. We have it remote control. We're gonna put it into a car with some Tinkercad stuff that we've done. The only thing that I will say is we only have these two motors that are hooked up. And if I take some other motors, they don't really want to necessarily add in. So I can add three I've learned, but not four. But the thing is, I think if I added another nine volt battery, I could probably get four going. So that's something that you could add in if you wanted to. And you would just sort of attach the motors 
the same way. You put two on each side and that could work for you. So you can see that I can get three going and four, I don't think if I recall, wants to really work for me. Um, and that might have overloaded my system for my IR. There we go. Um, so if you really want the four wheels, I would suggest doing another nine volt battery and that will give you extra voltage over on this motor pin. So right now our motor pin has this nine volts and an extra five volts. So it's got 14 volts on this pin. You can add up to 36 volts. The more voltage you add, the faster this will also go. So you can sort of add in a couple more of these nine volts until you get up to 36. Don't go over 36 volts. That'll be too much for this little guy, but it will help you drive extra sets of motors. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us in this amazing Tinkercad remote control project. You guys have done an amazing job. And when your 3D printed parts come in, we will be able to put it all together and have a fun little remote control car. I hope you guys have learned so much with circuits in this project and a lot of coding. It's been a great time having you guys and make sure you check out our other Tinkercad and breadboard circuits tutorials online. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. Bye friends.